go into a bit more detail about specific things that you need for your particular area. So we'll cover some of the college details. We'll also throw in a couple of polls and some competitions along the way as well, just to kind of make this session nice and interesting. And at the very end of today's session, we are going to be joined by some of our current students. So we'll have our student panel alongside us here in these seats. They will appear magically. Um, and you'll have a chance to ask them some questions at that particular point. So before we go too much further in today's presentation, what we'd like to do is just a acknowledgement of country, which is particularly important for us um, here at Flinders. And I am going to introduce my colleague, Joanne Buckskin, who is one of our staff members who um, teaches into the Ind Indigenous Studies program area. Thank you, Eliza. Um, Nina Mani, everyone. Um, hello, how are you in Ghana? Look, on behalf of the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Science, I wish to acknowledge Ghana country and pay our respect to the elders past and present. I wish to recognise the continuing importance of Ghana people's ongoing relationship to their country. I wish to extend our respect to First Nations people in our audience today. So thank you, Eliza. Marawichanga, Ghana, me and I wangani, mani to put nigani atana. Nibiriko, Mankalakala, Tandanya, Mianaku. Nature, young and dalya, nature, yakan and dalya, Padni Adlu Wadu. On behalf of the Ghana people, I welcome you all to Ghana country, and I do this ambassador of the Adelaide Plains people. My brothers, my sisters, let's walk together in harmony. Natalia. Thank you, Joanne, and that was a little short video from Uncle Lewis O'Brien, who is our elder in residence here at Flinders University. Um, and it won't be the last time we reference Indigenous knowledge um, throughout your degree here. We try to embed this in a lot of our topics, um, especially in the College of Haas. Now, one of the things you might not necessarily have known when you applied for your degree is the fact that you do actually belong to this college. So you are part of the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. We often call it HAS for short. It's a bit quicker to say. Um, so there are six colleges in the university and they're generally grouped. Can I get up? Okay. 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 So thank you, Joanne. I um, hope you enjoyed that short video from Uncle Lewis O'Brien, who is our elder in residence here at Flinders University. And it's not the last time you'll probably hear about Indigenous knowledges within our topics. We try to embed this as much as we can. Um, now, one thing you might not necessarily know about your degree is that you're actually involved in this College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. So we often call it HAS for short, it's a bit quicker to say, um, but overall there's six different colleges in the university and generally these are grouped based on similar areas or disciplines um, and these are really in place to make sure that there are the staff and support in place to help you throughout your degree. Um, so I won't bore you to death with all the different people and positions involved in the college but I would like to introduce you to our Dean of Education to tell you a little bit about our college. Thank you very much, Eliza. I would like to also acknowledge that I'm standing on the land of the Ghana people, and I would like to acknowledge their elders, past, present, and emerging. So a very warm welcome uh, to you all on behalf of the college, and thank you for attending this orientation session today. Uh, we are truly delighted to have you here, at least virtually, and orientation is really, really important, especially uh, as a first-year student with us at Flinders University, and 
We're hoping that through today's activities, you're going to learn a lot of uh, very useful information and uh, uh, also tips. So welcome also to our College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. And we, as uh, Eliza mentioned, we call it uh, CHAS or HAS in short. Uh, really, this is the most exciting college uh, at Flinders. Here, here. Um, <laughs> So what is really our college? I'm going to give you a few, a few stats. Uh, we've got 23 disciplines uh, in the area of language, culture, and communication, social sciences, creative and performing arts, history, archaeology, indigenous studies, and geography. So in fact, some of our disciplines, uh, such as English, French, Spanish, philosophy, and drama, were actually foundational disciplines uh, when the university was first created in uh, 1966. So we've been around for a while. What do we do in chess? Well, we focus on providing answers to some of the most fundamental human uh, questions, and hopefully we contribute to the riches of people's life, something that you are now a part of. In the college, we have about 2,300 uh, students enrolled in our courses, and it's about 10% of the uh, total university intake. We have a 65 to 35 female to male ratio. 90% of our students are actually based in South Australia, but we have 5% of our students who are international and 5% of our students who are interstate. So I would like to uh, welcome you if you're international and interstate, uh, a special welcome for you. And uh, we hope that you're going to enjoy everything South Australia has to offer. We mostly teach on the Bedford Park campus where we are actually um, presenting from today. But we do have some classes in, uh, in the city uh, at Victoria Square and AC Arts. And we're looking at expanding our city presence. Uh, hopefully in a few years, more and more will be taught there. So you might actually have an opportunity uh, to be in the city at some stage. Um, we have 100 uh, academic staff, and all of them are expert in their relevant disciplines, and, and everyone is really, really passionate about providing you with an exceptional university experience. We, we have a great, great team of professional staff who will provide you with all the support you need at any time. So if, for example, you are looking for a room, you have a timetabling issue, uh, you're looking for your lecturer's office, you want some advice about uh, topics, you want to discuss your enrollment, you want to change courses, or even if you want to talk to me, please come to the college front in the humanities building, and it's next to the central library, and there will be uh, you know, support there uh, for you um, uh, at that particular location. So I wish you a great academic journey with us and the very best for the start of the 2022 uh, academic year. And please remember that help is at hand and we are here to assist you. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much, much Herrick, for your uh, presentation and as Eric mentioned, there are lots of degrees in discipline in our college. Um, as someone representing history, I may add that history was also a foundational discipline in this university. But the point that we want to make is that the College of House is exceptionally diverse. And in the word of, uh, or namesake, Flinders, experiment and experiment bravely. And the College of House enable you to do just that with the wide array of discipline that we offer. Speaking of which, we are going to take a second poll for today because we are keen to hear uh, which degree or discipline you are enrolled in. So we are just about to launch that poll. So please tell us uh, your degree or the discipline that you're most keen to study. Uh, and Eliza will tell us what comes out of that poll because the screen is very far away from me. <laughs> Yes, thanks, Romaine. Um, so, the, yeah, the question we were asking you then is which area are you studying in? Now, this is one that you may not necessarily know. Our college is split into three different areas. Uh, one is the creative and performing arts. Second one is history, archaeology, indigenous studies, and geography. 
And the third one is languages, lingu linguistics, communication studies. So have a go. I can see there's quite a few from creative and performing arts this morning. You can see yourselves on the screen some of those responses. And like Eric and Romain just referred to, there is such diversity within our college, so it's nice to kind of see where others fit within our college. And hopefully you'll have a chance to network and communicate with others in various different areas as you go through your studies. Okay. So what's the outcome of the poll? So most within creative and performing arts. Right, fantastic. Areas. Welcome to you all. So I think this is the time where I say, I remember when I started university. Uh, that wasn't that long ago, please. And look, what I will say is that for me and probably for most people who went through uni, you remember that fondly because that's one of the most exciting times in your life. You, it, It's not only about education, and I should say it's about education and learning, and of course it is, but it sets you up for life in a whole different kind of ways as well. You meet new people and to this day I'm still friend with a good deal of the people that I met on day one, day two, day three of university um, and I think that's the whole package, that the whole experience and certainly that's what Flinders uh, will attempt and I'm sure will deliver to you not only world-class education but also a great experience. I remember you know, going out, the concert, meeting people on the side of studying very hard. So you're embarking uh, on an exciting time and I really hope that you will make the most of your time here. Go introduce yourself to people, go and join clubs, societies, activities beyond your study. And in fact, Flinders really offers the opportunity to expand your horizons and follow your patience. One of the things that I did at uni and that I encourage you to do that Flinders University offers is to go overseas for six months or a year. I mean, this is, this is a life-changing experience. Um, I wouldn't have gone to many, many countries, living in the US, living in Australia, if it hadn't been for that opportunity to go away at some stage. And you can do this at Flinders University. Most degrees have option topics as well that you can choose which means that on the side of what you are doing, your core discipline, you can choose to explore other disciplines. Let's say you're doing visual arts, but you're interested in a sociology topic, you can do that as an elective. So hopefully you will make great connections, not only between disciplines, but also between students, with our staff, and through association and clubs. Thank you, Romain. Yes, it is a very exciting um, journey that you're starting today. Uh, what we also like to acknowledge is the fact that you could be joining us from various different pathways. There's lots of different pathways you can go through to reach university. So this leads us into our next poll, which is talking about where have you come from? So you should see that coming up onto your screen now. So have you come from secondary school? Are you coming from TAFE? Have you perhaps started university already and transferred to a different degree? Or have you come from a potentially working in, in industry? I'll give you a moment or two just to record your responses. You guys are so quick, it's impressive. <laughs> like, given the fact that most of you never used Collaborate before, you're up to it. You know, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> See the comments we've just ended. We're just going to try run that again, just quickly. Unfortunately, there are sometimes issues with technology. <laughs> we've definitely found that over the last couple of years, haven't we, Ramon? <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Always works seamlessly. Exactly. It? Okay, I can see we're up and running again now. Um, so again, we can sort of see that majority of people are coming fr from secondary school and joining us here at university. Um, some from the working in industry. Um, so it's just really um, important to recognise that we all have slightly different backgrounds as we enter the university. And we know that the transition to university can be a little bit daunting. 
Um, I've witnessed a transition recently myself. My um, eldest daughter started primary school, and yes, there were some tears. There were fears, tears from me and her. Um, <laughs> but yes, it was definitely interesting to kind of see that transition first person and see that there is that uncertainty in entering a new space. You don't know what the structure is going to be like. You don't know what kind of experiences you're going to have. So we do acknowledge that it is a, a tough thing to get used to. Um, but just remember that everyone is on a slightly different <coughs> journey. Everyone has a slightly different background. Um, you know, some of you are coming directly from secondary school. Others of you have been working in the workforce for a number of years. Um, so everyone has a slightly different story um, and different sets of strengths and weaknesses. So just be mindful. We don't expect you to be perfect right off the bat, that's for sure. Um, it's, a, it's a learning experience. So we expect that it's going to take a little while to settle in and to get used to um, university studies. So don't be tough on yourself. <laughs> expect there to be this transition period because we expect it as well. Um, and just be mindful of that. And you may see others in your class that look, you know, cool as a cucumber, but deep down inside, I'm sure they've got the same sort of anxieties and uncertainties as you as well. So just bear that in mind. Yes, thank you. Um, so if you have been living under a rock, you may not know that... Uh, a virus uh, shake the way uh, we live and work and teach. And so at the moment, you will have a mix of online and face-to-face -face experiences at Flinders University. You may hear the word VC. That stands for Vice Chancellor. This is the most important person in the university. And the name of a VC is Colin Sterling. And or Vice Chancellor has reminded us that... Um, face-to-face -face is an essential experience for teaching. And as opposed to other universities in South Australia, <clears throat> Flinders uh, is making sure that we deliver online to be safe, but also as much face-to-face -face teaching as we can, because we know that this is the preferred option for students. You guys crave being in the lecture theatre or in the tutorial class, and mingle, because it's not only about us, Eliza, and myself, though I'd like to think it is, but it is also about meeting new friends and catching up and experiencing the campus. So this semester, some of your larger, most of your larger lectures will be delivered online and you will be able to access them through Flow. My biggest tip for you when you do online is to cut off your mobile, get off TikTok, Instagram, etc. Because if you are multitasking, it seems great, but your attention, the way your brain, your ears, your touch, all the things that make retention disappear if you're not focusing on this. So if you want to do it right when it's online, cut off any other thing and just focus on this for an hour uh, or the time it takes. And then there will be the face-to-face -face experiences. Deliver it safely here. You'll be required to wear a mask, uh, try to maintain social distances, you will be given uh, a lot of um, heads up about this through different emails and on flow. And that will happen in the tutorial room or in seminars. And we are so looking forward to uh, seeing you in the classroom. I mean, online is great, but there, is, there isn't anything better than engaging in the classroom with students. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, you will have the combination of both online and face-to-face. -face. Hopefully, as we progress, it will be more face-to-face. -face but we'll see how we go along. Um, so we just kind of want to uncover some of the mysteries with university experiences interactions. So I thought we'd just talk briefly about lectures um, and seminars as well. So what are these sessions? What goes on? Because I think some of that is quite new, especially when you're coming directly from secondary school. So lectures, we used to have them face to face in these lecture theatres, but we will be doing them online this semester. Um, so basically, your lecturers are experts in their field. We've spent years researching and studying our particular areas. We love this stuff, and we hope to share those passions with you as well. But essentially, what we're doing in lectures is we're bringing together the key theories 
the key ideas that are kind of discussed within our areas. So we're doing a lot of the hard work for you in lectures by bringing together all these different sources. So it's a really good point to really get to know your area of study. And what we'd like you to do alongside of that is do some wider reading to kind of help cement some of this knowledge that we're imparting as well. So a lot of the time, lectures are the lecturer talking to you. However, we do try to make this as interactive as possible. So like today's session, even though we're online for lectures, we'll often throw out a poll, you know, some quizzes, all sorts of different things, basically to check that you're still alive on, the, on your <laughs> side of the computer um, and to make sure you are engaging with it as well. Now, seminars are a little bit different, and luckily most seminars are occurring face-to-face -face here on campus this semester. So these seminars are really an opportunity for you guys to collaborate, to discuss. You know, the tutor or the lecturer will be going through some activities with you, but essentially in, that, in those sessions, they are sort of the facilitator in that sense. Um, so as Romaine said, there is a need to wear masks during these seminars, when you're on campus, your lecturers and tutors will be doing the same as well. Um, also, just a note around some of your key sessions that you've got timetabled. Your timetable may say that your session is from 10 to 11. However, generally we finish at 10 to the hour, and that's to make sure you've got enough time to finish one session and move on to the next. Hopefully, most of your classes are close together, or it's a quick pop offline and then go to class. Um, so hopefully, that transition should be fairly simple. And hopefully, you've come up with a timetable that suits you as well. So just to quickly touch upon um, where to access things for lectures in particular, as they are online, you will have a collaborate link um, on each of your topic pages. Now, we use a system called FLOW, which stands for Flinders Learning Online. So all your topics are there, and you can access information about each of your topics. So um, another word of technicality that you may uh, want to know about is the distinction between professional staff and academic staff. Essentially, academic staff at university are the people who deliver the content, assess your assignment, and sit tests. They are the one who think they run the show. But in reality, the one who truly run the show are the professional staff. These are my colleagues who provide everyday support to you. If you've got a question about your online learning environment, if you've got a question about your timetable, if you've got a question about practical things that support your learning experience, that's where you go, the professional staff. Usually the academic staff is going to be your lecturer, your associate professor, your professor, your senior lecturer, uh, who will deliver the content, be that in sociology, in history, in drama. And this is a distinction we make. So when you've got a question, think as to whether it's an academic question about content and reading, and therefore should be directed to an academic staff, or whether it's something that is more practical or technical to support your learning, which should then be directed to professional staff. Yeah, definitely need the professional staff to keep the show going, that's for sure. Um, also really important for your experience here at the university is our support services. Now, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about these later in this session, but just to quickly mention, there are lots of different services that will help you along your journey. So, for instance, the library is a really key one, um, student learning support service as well. Um, so, there are lots of different um, groups, I guess, that play into your experience here at the university. It's not just us within the college, it's the university-wide services too. And the last group we want to talk about, which is really important in terms of your experience here at university, is your peers. So again, this is why we value face-to-face -face interactions so much as well at our university, because your peers are a really important part of your university experience. Not only socially, but also in classes, you learn a lot from each other. So as I mentioned before, you can come from various different backgrounds, have different perspectives, and that all helps in discussing ideas and really trying to work through activities in classes as well. Thank you, Liza. Um, so, pose, 
Stretch your hands, your arms, your brain. We are going to have a short competition. And it's going to be a poll. And the competition is, what does house stand for? Liza mentioned it. If you listened, <laughs> no pressure. So first you can also one. find it on Google. <laughs> yeah, true. So first one to answer correctly in the chat box. we'll get one of the most important thing at the university, a parking pass. <laughs> yes. So once we identify the winner, we'll get in touch with you. And some merch. How and good is we that? Have a winner. We have a winner. It's Rihanna. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good stuff. You know what Hass is already. It's a good start. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. So as I said, we'll get in touch with you and organise your prize. Well done. Now, uh, let's make sure that you've got all the essentials covered for uh, this semester, this first year, and your university journey. So we're going to go through a few things that are absolutely essential to get you started, and we'll go through them one by one. Yes, perfect. So one of the key things to have is your student ID card. So this is a really important task. You need it for borrowing from the library, uh, for exams, for printing. So you can order this online. So if you go onto Compass, onto My Systems, and then order My ID card. Also, if you're on campus, you can always drop into Flinders Connect and also organise your student ID card there. So Flinders Connect is located just off the plaza area. And it is really important to obtain your ID card as soon as possible because certain topics and degrees um, use quite specialised spaces, especially in our college. So you need to make sure you've got access to these particular spaces. Um, so if you find yourself without access to one of these spaces, you can contact the college directly and include a photo of your student ID and access can be arranged for you. I think more details with that will be covered in the discipline sessions because they will mention any particular spaces that you need to organise access to. So get your card is the bottom line and yes. be part of the crew. Definitely, exactly. Put the Flinders name against your name. That's right. <laughs> okay, another really key thing you need to do is make sure you are enrolled in topics. Um, so basically trying to figure out a timetable that works for you is, is always easiest if you try and enrol as quickly as you can. So do ensure that you're enrolled into all of the topics for semester one and that you've got both lecture and seminar selected if that is the arrangement for that particular topic. Again, in the discipline sessions today, I'm sure they'll go into a little bit of detail about that as well. Now, uh, textbooks, that may or may not be important depending on the topic that you are going to read this semester. Some topics, um, like mine for instance, have a wide array of e-readings that you access online. So you don't need to buy anything. It's in PDF, it's online, it's all on flow and you'll be able to access that. Many of the topics, however, require specific textbooks to help you through the learning. That happens in languages, for instance, but also in other disciplines. There are many options for sourcing textbooks. Many remember that, are available on loan from the Flinders Library, which is on campus, which is 10 metres away from the College of Haas. And of course, if you want to borrow books, you need your card. So get on to the ID card. But sometimes, some of you may choose to actually buy their textbook because you want to write on them, because you want to keep them as souvenir. Whatever the reason is, you may need to buy your individual textbook. Um, and the best way or the quickest way to do this at the moment is to go online to different booksellers. Booktopia, for instance, is a very good one. Uh, and they usually stock a lot of textbooks, so they will get to you uh, quickly. But do your research online uh, as to what the best option is for you. Make sure that you, when you order your textbook, make sure you order the right edition. An edition is when a book has been published and printed, printed several times. So if you buy, you know, Learn French from 1995, that's not going to help you. Make sure you identify the right edition, usually that is given in the name of the textbook provided by your lecturer. So your required textbook, plus
please go ahead and buy them if you need to purchase them. But check on the library catalog if they are there for you to borrow because that may be a way of uh, saving money. Now, uh, ID card, textbook, getting you here is the third step. There are many different ways that you can get to uh, Flinders. If you live nearby, you can walk. If you live further or far, you can take your car. There are wide areas of parking here. But please, whatever you do, if you start at 9, make sure you get there at least 20 minutes early because that's when you'll be competing with academic staff, professional staff and other students to get a park. And um, that is a jungle. So make sure you leave plenty of time if you come with your car to be able to get a parking spot. And I say that because first year students who get in on campus a bit late, um, uh, sometimes they're accidents. Not grave accidents, but please be careful and mindful if you use your car as you get used to the campus. Other options, and perhaps preferred option really, if you want to make your life simpler, include the railway and buses. There are countless buses that come to this campus and as an educator I'd like to point out that if you're going to spend 20 or 30 or 40 minutes in a bus that's a great way of uh, reading and preparing for your topic. So buses and train are an option. There is a train line that stops here at Flinders University and I highly encourage you to try it out. Thank you Romain. Um, so a couple of things we just want to mention very quickly. Um, is the fact that there are some scholarships available and you don't have to be necessarily the best student out there, um, but there are a selection of different um, scholarships that are awarded based on academic merit or demonstrated need. So feel free to have a little look at this particular site um, for more information on eligibility there. Now, really important for your experience at university is the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Very important. So we have a network called EduRoam that our institution is attached to. Now for this you need to have your FAN as your username. So again, if you don't know your FAN already, make sure you get to know it. And you need your password, the university password, to log on to the system. So once you've done that once, I believe it still continues to log on each time you enter the campus. And it's really useful to have that as you're moving around campus especially in seminars, it means you can sort of log on, do a few activities as well. And you don't use your personal data. And How good is that? And you don't use your own data, exactly. Right. Make the most of the university That's Wi-Fi. That's right. Okay, so now a few just tips in terms of making the most to orientation. So Flinders organises a range of activities uh, with regard to orientation. Um, there is a week, orientation week, that is happening now between the 21st and the 25th of Feb. There is Connect Week, uh, which is lasting a bit longer. There will be Wellbeing Week as well and Skills Week. Orientation Week is for fun. Please enjoy it. It's where you learn about uni. It's when you come on campus to see concerts, share a bit of food, have a bit of a yarn with friends um, and discover the campus. So please do as many of these activities as you uh, can because they will sort you out for your uni experience. But look out to the emails that you will receive in the coming weeks about these different weeks, Connect Week, Wellbeing Week and Skills Week. You don't have to get involved in all of those and you can certainly pick and choose what suits you best. Perfect. Um, so there is an orientation planner online which you, hopefully you've had a look at already. Um, more and more activities are being added onto there on a daily basis. So for instance, there are more campus activities on there now. So there are things like live music, um, a merchandise pop-up shop as well that's going to be in a shop off of the plaza. There's also going to be some campus tours for Hass as well. So they're on Wednesday and Thursday afternoon and also Friday morning. So do pop onto the orientation calendar so you can see a little bit more detail around that. There is also an online welcome hub. Um, so if you do have questions, you can pop onto that. It's available um, during O week. There is also going to be a physical stand over in the hub. So if you are on campus, you can also rock up to that as well. And there will be some student ambassadors 
there who can answer some of your questions. Now, um, I'd recommend that you, you take that time as well to brush up on your academic skills and general uni life uh, knowledge by checking out the orientation video library. So the orientation video library provides you with a range of short videos that tell you about specific things like flow, the Flinders learning environment and how to use it, or understanding your textbooks and readings, or your assignments and grade, or studying for success. They are very short videos that you can watch in your own time that gives you very practical tips and information um, on your university path, but also on managing your well-being while uh, at university. Okay, perfect. Now, we have a quick competition once more. So, see who's first off the bat here. So, the question is, what does FLOW stand for? And in fact, it was on that previous slide. Just it then. was. Um, we so, said it a few times. Yes. Nicola. Nicola Freeman is our winner for that one. So Congratulations. Well done, Good go. Um, so well done. You've been paying attention, which is great. So we're yeah, you're very quick, very quick off the bat. They can type quicker than me, that's for sure. Do, they, do, do you know the thing that we're going to give prizes away while lecturing? Because uh, that's <laughs> maybe, a bit exceptional, guys. Yeah, maybe we should in the future. Um, so, yes, we'll be in contact with you, Nicola, about your prize. Thank you. So, just quickly, we also wanted to touch upon some of the help that's available at the university. Yes, and your first port of call as someone who is studying in the College of Haas is uh, the College Front Office. So this is on the main campus, uh, close to what is called the plaza, the hub, where you've got the library, where you've got delicious food and concert and a massive screen. We, Haas, is at the very centre of this university. The college front is on the first floor and when you get there you will be greeted by, well, probably some of the loveliest uh, staff that there is on uh, campus. They work uh, as uh, professional staff for the College of Haas and they're here to help you with any practical question that you may have. A lot of these questions, you'll be able to sort them out online with Ask at Flinders, but if you are an on-site person and if you want to come in and ask questions face-to-face, -face, you can definitely do that at the college front office. As I said, there is on-site, but there is also uh, online to ask your question. And the best way to do this is go to Ask Flinders. Ask Flinders, Google it, Ask Flinders is the best tool to use for your queries. So if you've got any practical question, but you don't really know whom to send it to, send it to Ask Flinders because that tool will make a triage and get your uh, question to the right person. So it's usually the easiest way uh, and one of the quickest way to get information on what it is that you want to uh, find out. Okay, so another um, really good source of information for you guys as you're starting your journey here is the Finding Your Way at Flinders Flow site. So this is really good in terms of orienting you to the university and finding out different services and things like that at the university. Now we do have a little video around support services at the university, however we might just share that link in the chat box so you can have a look at that in your own time. So I'm really keen to get to our, our student panel as well. So do have a look at that and there is a really great site um, on the Flinders student page around support services as well. Now another thing, another support scheme that is available to you is the mentoring program. You may want to get involved in it, you may not want, that's, that's really your choice. But uh, the mentoring program is designed to help you settle into uh, life at Flinders University by connecting you with uh, other students and a mentor. Some of you may have friends here at Flinders and you'll get a lot of information through them because they've gone through it already, but others may want to connect with a mentor. So make sure to register and participate and you'll be assigned someone who will help you out uh, to understand the university life. Flinders is also committed to providing safe and respectful learning environment for all student and staff and this is really important guys 
So if you witness or experience any socially unacceptable behavior or harassment, please make a confidential report. This is important. You are not alone. You will be listened and um, the matter will be addressed. So this is very serious. Safety, we take it very, very, um, we take it at heart, really. Okay. So now to some more Haas specific info. Um, so at, in Haas, we have some student reps who basically act as your voice in the student journey. Um, they are representatives that really feed into our committees, our um, discussions at the university. And so it's really a way of, of getting the student voice out there and making sure you have a say in some decisions that affect you as well. So student reps are currently being recruited. Um, so hopefully towards, I think, week three, we'll have a set list of our student reps and that'll be advertised to you so you know who you can approach and who you can have discussions with about your degree. Uh, and there are reps for every college. So there's, as I mentioned before, six colleges in total um, in the university. Um, and also I wanted to mention some of the Haas related associations. So there's lots of associations and clubs throughout the university. So these are some of the ones that are related to your study areas. Um, and they are quite active in terms of putting on events, um, web webinars, all sorts of different things. So these are some associations you might want to look into. Um, one that shared this little poster with us um, is Speakeasy, which is all about being creative. And you don't necessarily have to be in a creative degree um, to be part of this, but there is a QR code there if you do want to kind of scan it in and find out a little bit more. Now also we've got a newly founded arts association for our college. So we're just gonna divert to Grace, who is heading up the arts association. Hi guys, so the Arts Association is currently in its inaugural year. We got it up and running at the beginning of last year. We're a student-run group of your peers who are working to create a social and supportive community for students in the BA, Baja, BCA, BARC and relevant BWIT programs. We'll be offering a range of social, educational, and wellbeing activities, as well as collabs we've already organized for this year with the Thinking Caps, which are essentially the Science Association, and FULSA, which is a Law Students Association, in the coming semester and year, to acknowledge some of the wonderful combination degrees that some of you might also be in, as well as encouraging socialization across colleges. We want you around to help make us great. We haven't been allocated a permanent home yet, however, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and I've already linked the Discord in the chat earlier. I can relink it after I finish speaking. We'll also be providing an O-Week pack, which should be landing in your inbox any day now. We're just finalising little bits. It will be filled with lots of goodies, including events, recipes, film recommendations. We've put together a playlist, and we'll also be introducing our executives so you know who will be working for you. We're here to represent, uh, sorry, let me restart, across the degrees we represent, we've noticed that it was difficult, not only during the COVID period, but prior to form a sense of community and cohort due to all the different major and minor degrees. Forming these relationships is some, are some of the most exciting parts of being at university. It's Flass's vision that through creating a fun space where people can come together in our degrees, that we will create a place where we can create lifelong friendships and establish connections far more easily than it was than previously. Our executive is home to several students who are originally from interstate, including myself, who understand like how isolating and like difficult it can be to meet people when you're first coming to university. It seems like everyone knows someone. If, so if you're feeling lonely and would like to make some new pals, feel free to contact us via any of our social media and we'll be able to figure something out to help you out 
we can put on social events. We can do more personalized things. It's really up to you. Whatever you want, we're happy to accommodate. Within the week guide, we'll have several social events, including a social night, which we'll, we'll have to hold digitally until we can all come together and have like a proper event in person. A live stream, which we'll be doing from our Facebook, where you'll be able to ask um, myself and a couple of other executive members questions and possibly a few more surprises for the coming weeks. Okay. Um, FWASA would also like to quickly acknowledge that we not only support each other, but other clubs within the college, such as the Book Club and Philosophy Club, but also associations throughout the university, from the Law Students Association to the Education Students Association to our pals over the lake at the Thinking Caps. Without people, the university experience is a shadow of what it could otherwise be. We hope through our efforts within the community and by connecting with other communities at the university, we will be able to illuminate your university careers with the technicolor of friendships, events, new ideas and memories. So I'm happy to link a couple of our socials below as well as popping our Instagram handle. And yeah, I'm also happy to answer any like quick questions anyone might have right now. Perfect. Thank you, Grace. Um, so, yes, if you do have any questions for Grace, feel free to put them on in the chat box. Um, but for the last few minutes we have today, I just wanted to do a quick panel with some of our current students. So we have Imogen here who studies archaeology. Um, Emma in the middle does a combination of history and women's and gender studies. And then Claire at the very end who studies tourism and events as well as languages. So I thought I would take this opportunity to ask them a few questions about their experiences at university and also give you a chance to put any questions you might have in the chat box as well. But I'll kick start off with a question for the guys. Um, so what's one thing you wish <clears throat> someone told you as a first year student? Um, well, hello. Um, I guess the main thing I wish someone had told me was to take time to still do things for yourself. So when you first come to university, it can be a little bit overwhelming. You want to make sure you get all your assignments done, do all your readings, everything like that. And self-care sometimes slips out the window. It's really, really important to make sure that you still take time to rest and recharge because you're not going to get the most out of your experience at university if you're tired and stressed all the time. Um, I think the thing that I wish I had been told, and I think I was told but didn't necessarily um, listen in my first year, is that there are a huge, huge amount of different resources at Flinders. Um, uh, they are designed to help you succeed. So if you are having an issue or a problem or a concern or you have a question, um, the chances are that there have been lots of other students in the same boat as you. There will probably be a resource that can help you. And if you are feeling overwhelmed, I know personally I felt a little overwhelmed by the amount and what each service was for, um, then go to FUSA or go to Flinders Connect or like a trusted lecturer and let them direct you in the right direction because there's lots of stuff there designed to help facilitate your success. Yep, I would say something similar, like make sure, like if you have a hobby, try and keep doing it. For example, I like to do crochet, so that's something I can do with my hands and just sort of zone out for a little bit, but then I can, once I've had my little crochet session, I can get back to uni work a little bit. And it's just important to, for your mental health as well, to make sure that you do have some time for you and not just study, 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 because your brain will overload and then you won't be able to do any study. So that's my tip for first year. Some good ideas, thanks. Um, and how about trying to manage studying online? So, for example, you may have some online lectures, but then you might have face-to-face -face classes afterwards. How do you gen generally manage that? Um, I think the most important thing for studying at home is to make sure that you have a separate space for studying. So don't just park up on the kitchen bench in amongst everyone else doing their stuff. You really need to have a home study or a, a little space set apart that is only for studying so that you can really get in the zone. If you do have a face-to-face -face straight after a lecture, you can either hire a room at the library, a study room um, online through the library website, or you can come in and find a quiet place 
um, pop your headphones in, listen to your lecture, and then you can head straight off to class or maybe have a little bit of time in between to get a bit of study done. There's lots of places on campus where you can sort of park up and, and get some work done before your in-person lectures. I would totally agree with everything that you just said. Um, and booking a room can be great. Um, if you just Google book a room at Flins, it should come up. And more often than not, there are heaps free, I'd say. Um, there aren't that many of them compared to students. And so I used to think, oh, well, they're going to be booked all the time, but they're not. Um, another thing that can be great when the weather's good is sitting outside to watch your lecture, um, sit by the lake, sit on a grassy green hill somewhere. But if you do that, just make sure that you get there quite early because some of the spots, the Wi-Fi doesn't always connect straight away if you're sitting in a <laughs> foresty area. But once you're connected, it's the best place to watch in my opinion. Yeah, I would say similarly, if you have a tutorial which is straight after your online lecture, like be on campus to watch the online lecture so that you can easily get to your tutorial. I personally really like going to the library, even if I don't book a room. I find it even just in the first level where it's technically a social area, so you can talk. So you can just sort of, the little hubbub of the other students is quite nice when you're trying to study and get stuff done. And then because the library's in the hub, because we're in the Haas College, it's fairly close to the humanities courtyard, so you're not in a rush to get to class. Yes, definitely lots of nice spaces to, to study along the campus. Yeah, perfect. Now, I think we've got time for maybe one more question for you guys. Um, have you learnt any particular hints or tips for studying that you'd like to share? My, my number one hint would be to go through your entire assessment for your topic and write down when things are due and what date so that you can set up a timeline because things can quite easily slip by. You've got readings to do, you've got social things to do, you, especially if you're doing a full load of study. Having something in front of you as a visual reminder of what you need to get done and when can really help you not end up with an assignment that's due the next day that you haven't even started because um, that does happen and it's obviously very stressful and also just can be easily avoided. Okay, I might just interject. We've got a question from online, um, which is, what's your advice for managing your readings? Well. <laughs> Make sure you do it. <laughs> try and like, usually there'll be essential readings and then additional readings. So as much as possible, try and do all your essential readings, um, mainly because they are useful for the most part. And um, <laughs> while there can seem to be a lot, uh, you can skim read it. The most important part is making sure you get the main point. So you read the introduction and the conclusion and then go through it. Um, and maybe try and write your own notes so that you're comprehending what you're reading and it's not just through your eyes, but then out your ear. Um, but managing readings can be <laughs> difficult. I know I struggle a little bit sometimes, especially with some of the heavily topics with a lot of readings. So I get that, but try and keep to the essentials as much as possible if you're really busy. But if you do have more time, obviously the lecturers want you to read as much as you can. So if you can, that's good, but just keep to the essentials basically. Just, um, yeah, one more thing on that. Um, I very much agree with what was just said before, but also if your lecture is about a specific topic, that's the sort of thing that you should be looking for in your reading. So try and find those keywords um, and then that's the area that you should be paying the most attention to is the areas um, yeah, that you're going to be studying that week. Can I add to that one quickly? Um, one thing I wish I'd known in first year about this is that reading is a skill and reading academic literature is a skill and so it can be tough, re it can be tough reading but you have to push yourself through some of that, take notes if you want to print it and highlight it, um, but you will get faster and you will get quicker at picking out the things that your lecturer is looking for and that you'll use in your assignments. So you just have to um, bear with it at the start, but it gets a lot easier. Yes, it can take a bit of getting used to. Okay, thank you, Imogen, Emma and Claire. Um, I wish we had more time for that, but unfortunately we've got to make sure everyone online can get off to their... Um, discipline sessions. So thank you very much for attending this session this morning. It is recorded so you can look back on this as well. Um, so 
you should hopefully know what the key locations are and links are for your next session. But if not, I think we've got it there as well. You can find the links through the orientation planner. So thank you very much and all the best for your studies.